dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald to the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, August Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry in the city of our salvation, following his footsteps, so that, being made by his grace partakers to the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we, who follow Christ the King in exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Savior to take fresh and punish the cross, graciously grant that we may hear this lesson of Faith and suffering, and to merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go and see Peter, certain men, and tell thee. The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In a house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered, and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will be paid. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me is the one who will be paid. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But what that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed? It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the wine, and the day that I drink it with you live in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing the hymn, they went out to the mountain. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all men have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise.
Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Seek here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let us come pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you do not keep watch with me for an hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my giving it, you will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. <coughs> then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at the hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my victory is at the hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, when he fell, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately, he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand on the sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in the sheath. For all who take the sword be perished by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and He will not provide me at this, at this moment with more than twelve angels or angels? But then, how could the Scripture be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, "Have you come out as against a robber?" with the swords and clubs to seize me. Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet he did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest. While the scribes and the elders were assembled, Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He is blessed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Christ, Christ, who is it that struck you? 
13. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus now again. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus, Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I did not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you two are one of them, even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, he will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned with thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Slinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money and said, It is not lawful to cause a place in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for forgiveness for far foreigners. That is why that field even today is called the field of blood. Then it was fulfilled what had been said to Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with peace on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they put it out for the potter's feet, just as the Lord had commanded them. Now Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to, to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas? Jesus called Christ. For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him all. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Peter said to them, Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water, washed his hands, the side of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released the rabbits to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldier of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own cloak, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, 
which means place of the skull. They gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink it. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who destroyed the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself, if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and the elders mocked him and said, He saved others, can he not save himself? For so he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Lai, lai, nama sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine, put it in a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit.
on behalf of Father George and myself and Shirley, who is our rector today, and Millie, who is our organist today, and Jesse, uh, our cantor, and Jack, who is filming the Mass for presentation today. We welcome you with very mixed emotions being able to engage with you in person in the liturgy and in the sharing of the Most Holy Eucharist that we, are, as we are so accustomed to as we pray that we will be able to do so again very, very soon. This is a place that we have not been before. And we are all humbled by these circumstances and we find ourselves today, yet we are confident and God's message to us as we begin Holy Week on this Palm Sunday. The message of unconditional love that His Son Jesus showed us all the way to the cross. Now many times our focus on Palm Sunday has a tendency to be centered around the palm branches that Father George just blessed. And the grand welcoming that we heard in the readings today of Jesus to Jerusalem, as we are told how great crowds were inspired by his promise that he would liberate them from their current oppression, which indeed he would, but certainly not in a manner that they had foreseen. However, our real focus today should really be on the passion surrounding the cross. Which you have just heard. And without question, the passion narrative speaks for itself. And it points us to Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and the Easter Vigil, and then culminating on Easter Sunday, which is the greatest celebration of the Christian world, that being the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Where we, like Lazarus, will have had our burial bands of sin untied. As this Holy Week and the Passion of the Cross unfolds for Jesus and for us, we are in the midst of a historical event taking place as we speak that brings to life some of what I think are some unprecedented parallels to this passion story that we have just heard, as we too are facing oppression in the form of the coronavirus. As Jesus anticipated his passion and death, he first teaches us that regardless how strong that we may think that we are, in times of trial, we must approach it first with humility and the willingness to seek a greater power than us. Just as Jesus, in his humanity, was humbled by what he was about to undertake as he looked to his Father for strength. Jesus had to face his fears, just like you and I are challenged to do today. And yes, it would bring him to his knees in the Garden of Gethsemane, much like we have been brought to our knees recently. Asking our Heavenly Father, as Jesus asked his Father, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But not as I will, but as you will. Jesus realized that his mission now would become his passion to save mankind, that even Peter, who was selected to lead the church, would fail, not once, not twice, but three times. As we prepare for Holy Week and follow Jesus to that cross, may we too be humble by what lies ahead of us today. May we be prepared to have our faith tested and to follow Jesus to our own 
Gethsemane in prayer. May we in faith be willing to say, Father, not as I will, but as you will. May we recognize our weaknesses and our doubts and our fears and our failures that they have already been drugged to the cross of Calvary. And yes, if Jesus would overcome his death on the cross, so will our death to sin be defeated as we too will share in the Easter promise and the victory that we will celebrate in just seven days, which will remind us that we are not alone. Jesus will always be by our side. May God bless each of us as we continue our faith journey and with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things are full and visible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not to make, consecrated from the Father. Through him all things were made. For I stand for our salvation, he came out of heaven. And the God of the Spirit was on the heart of the Virgin Mary, and they came in. For our sake was crucified on the much spot. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come from the end of glory to judge the living and the dead, and in his kingdom of heaven. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess to my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord. Let's offer our prayers and petitions. Response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, as we begin our solemn remembrance of the events of our salvation, may God grant us a spirit of humility and devotion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all government officials, that they may put aside their political differences and become unified in securing the needs of all the people they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and dying, that doctors, nurses, and all health care workers, that through their healing power of God, that they bring them comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for all health care providers, that God will give them the strength and the courage to continue to serve those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for the sanctity of all life, regardless of age or condition, that they may be given the best care possible. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for all those who have died, especially this past week, Dorothy Fackler, that they may be rewarded with their eternal peace and happiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and for the Christians of St. Teresa and St. Mary's, and for our own special intentions that we now hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, as we recall and give thanks for the Paschal mystery, we ask you to hear the prayers we ask today to Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, to my sacrifice to you may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand to praise the glory of his name, for I will fulfill all this holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near to hand, so that Though we did not merit by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made one for all, we may feel already the, the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we pray.
therefore, this existing prayer by sending down the spirit upon the flesh people, so that there is no us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and in their religious passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples. <coughs> Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, the Supreme was sent that he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
The peace of the Lord be with your faith. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sound of peace. As I mentioned in my homily, we certainly regret that you that are watching are unable to 
receive the body of Christ as we have here today. However, I would invite you uh, to join us in the spiritual communion. And you, if you will repeat after me, my Jesus, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into uh, my soul. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, Since come at least spiritually into my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you. As if you were already there. As if you were already there. And uniting myself wholly to you. And uniting myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And I would mention to you the poems that were blessed here today will be available for all parishioners. The first time that we are able to resume our public celebration of the Mass. Let us. Nourish with these second gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to call for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to wait for through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 